we're now going to introduce a new physical quantity called entropy. We've used omega, uh, which is a function of E, V, N, and alpha. And if E, V, and N are fixed, uh, the equilibrium state corresponds to the value of alpha for which omega is maximized. The problem uh, with multiplicities is if you can combine systems, multiple, uh, the, the uh, multiplicity functions, uh, you have to multiply them together. We would rather something that you could add when you combine systems. So by taking logarithms, we can convert uh, the, uh, uh, the multiplicity function into this new quantity, entropy. We also include uh, the, uh, the Boltzmann uh, constant k, which we've met before, and this converts uh, entropy uh, into a convenient set of units, or it actually allows us to use uh, the, the Kelvin temperature scale, if you like, uh, but it, it, it solves a problem of units. So the, uh, this entropy is, divide, uh, is defined as k times the logarithm of the number of ways. So, uh, a basic property of, of entropy uh, during uh, a real process, uh, the entropy of an isolated system always increases. Uh, in the state of equilibrium, entropy uh, attains its maximum value. We call this the Clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics. So I'm now going to use this omega function to derive the concepts of temperature, pressure, and chemical potential. So what I'll do is I'll start with a system uh, that contains uh, internal energy V, uh, sorry, E, uh, ha occupies volume V and contains N particles. I'm, I'm going to put a wall in uh, that isolates uh, two separate subsystems such that you have E1, V1, and N1 on one side uh, and E2, V2, and N2 on the other side. And uh, the these... Uh, are constrained in such a way that uh, the energies, uh, volumes, and particle numbers of the subsystems have to add up to give the, the total uh, values of these quantities. So these are called equations of constraint. We'll assume uh, that the subsystems aren't in equilibrium, uh, and we'll assume that the wall separating them to begin with is rigid, impermeable, and diathermal. What that means is energy can pass through it, uh, the particles can't pass through it, and the wall's fixed in place. We can, uh, for, uh, for any uh, division of E, V, and N between the two subsystems, uh, we can write uh, that uh, the overall multiplicity is a function of E, V, and N, and then uh, we represent uh, the, uh, the quantities needed for a non-equilibrium system uh, by alpha, and uh, we will choose uh, the, uh, the, uh, the subscripted one variables to be the independent ones. Once uh, we've chosen those, we can use the equations of constraint uh, to get the values of those variables with subscript 2 on them. So omega 1 is the multiplicity of, uh, of subsystem 1, omega 2 is the uh, uh, multiplicity of subsystem 2, and uh, the multiplicity of the composite system uh, is arrived at by multiplying both of them together. As I said, we prefer to use logarithms, uh, so using uh, s equals k times the logarithm of, of omega, uh, we can now uh, write an expression uh, for the composite entropy. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the definition of a total differential uh, to explore this. So if we let the systems come to equilibrium, at equilibrium, entropy is maximized, so then we can write that ds is equal to zero. And uh, obviously, uh, the net uh, change in entropy uh, can be arrived at uh, from uh, the, uh, the uh, sum of the entropy changes in subsystem one and subsystem two. So what we're saying here really is ds is equal to ds1 plus ds2, but ds net is equal to zero. Uh, so that gives us the equation that we're going to use. 
And uh, using uh, the expression for the total differential, I can rewrite this equation. Uh, and uh, that uh, means I, I can rewrite each uh, partial each total differential for ds1 and ds2 in terms of three partial differentials, uh, which, which I've done uh, in uh, this expression. And uh, then I can use my equations of constraint uh, to relate uh, the the uh, uh, the 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 uh, changes uh, of the other variables. So uh, what we're saying is uh, that uh, in uh, this particular case, uh, the uh, we can't exchange particles. We can't uh, change uh, the the volume numbers. So dv1, dv2, dn1, and dn2 are all equal to zero, which vastly simplifies the equation. It, it takes it down to two terms. Uh, the net change in energy is equal to zero, uh, So uh, because again, we're, we're at, at equilibrium. Uh, and uh, this uh, means uh, that we can write dE1 is equal to minus dE2 using the equation of constraint. And uh, that uh, gives us uh, the equation uh, displayed on this slide. And since uh, dE1 is equal to minus dE2, uh, we can uh, write the condition uh, uh, in the following way. And this uh, turns out to be the condition uh, for thermal equilibrium. In other words, uh, no heat transfer. And you notice I've added subscripts to my partial derivatives because uh, this equation holds particularly when v1, n1, v2, and n2 are all uh, held constant. Uh, so we have uh, then some relations in terms of, uh, of our partial derivatives uh, for this uh, thermal equilibrium. We actually already know uh, what the condition uh, for thermal equilibrium is it's that the temperatures match up. So using this, we can define uh, the, uh, the temperature uh, uh, in terms of the partial derivatives. Uh, the choice isn't unique, uh, but making this choice uh, makes the absolute temperature scale identical to the gas temperature scale. And that's why we define uh, 1 over T uh, is equal to, to the partial of S with respect to E while holding uh, the volumes and uh, uh, particle uh, numbers constant. So that's going to be our ongoing definition for temperature, or at least for inverse temperature. We'll uh, often invert this expression uh, to get a temperature definition. We'll end uh, this little video here.